Hello VC, another fat bearded man talking about records. Uh, or you could call me Headley. Uh, hello, nice to be here. Um, it's been a while since I've done a kind of a uh, an update of some of the records I've got. I've done some uh, contest entries uh, recently. So this is kind of an opportunity for me to get back on the wagon, as it were. Um, but first, I've got some VCLT. Um, John, the six inch pianist, that's pianist, um, he sent this along. A, a package came in the post. I wasn't expecting it. I, uh, I, I opened it and um, to my surprise, I found a copy, sealed copy of the Jayhawks. Can I do that? Oh, it's still got a... Uh, smile. Um, this is a double uh, disc set. It was originally released in 2000. This is uh, a re-release from 2014. And yet yeah, John sent this along. Um, apparently he said he found um, a collection of, uh, of these. Um, still sealed, really cheap, and he thought of me. So John, thank you very, very much for thinking of me. Um, it was wonderful to receive this. It's a really good album. If those of you who don't know the Jayhawks, they um, were a kind of part of the sort of second generation uh, of alternative comedy, well, alternative comedy, alternative country uh, acts that came along uh, in the sort of 80, late 80s, 90s. They, they were formed in um, 85, I think, by Mark Olson and Gary Loris um, in the Twin Cities. Um, somewhere up there and um, originally they were far more uh, countryfied uh, than they eventually would, would turn out to be and um, that was probably partly due to Mark Olson who um, after their album Tomorrow the Greengrass uh, he, he left uh, partly to look after his, um, his wife Victoria Williams who had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis uh, but also I think there was there was tension in the band as well. Um, and as a result, with, with him, he, he went off to form the, um, was it the original, the original Harmony Creek Ridge, hang on, the original Harmony Ridge, oh yeah, the original Harmony Ridge Creek Dippers. Yeah, and I think they just released some, some other albums as Creek Dippers, which is, you can understand why. The original Harmony Ridge Creek Dippers, that's it. So um, that was Mark Olson's uh, group that he started with, with Victoria Williams. Uh, and so that left uh, Gary Loris and the band to kind of soldier on. Um, and they took a kind of a bit of a change of, uh, of direction. A bit more poppy, uh, less countryfied. And this album um, is, I think, the, possibly the last one before they, they, they uh, split uh, and went on a hi hiatus for a while. Um, and it's got some great tracks on there. The opener, Smile, is marvellous. Um, I've always liked that one. I, I have had it on CD, but it's lovely to have a copy uh, on vinyl. There's some, some bonus demo tracks on here as well. Um, yeah. So, John, uh, thank you very, very much. Um, it is much appreciated. Uh, you're a star, man. You are a star. I'll try and scratch your back at some point. Right, OK. Um, I'm going to move on now to um, a collection I bought uh, on eBay, very cheap for a fiver, and they're all the same artist, and the t-shirt is a bit of a giveaway, it is Bob Wills. So this is the first one, an anthology, um, this is a sort of a, a, a 73 release, it's got all the sort of stuff from uh, from the 1950s, uh, uh, sorry, 1930s and 40s on here. So it's the sort of early stuff. And um, yeah, it, um, Western Swing, for those of you who don't know, which is that blending of uh, swing band jazz with uh, Western themes and um, instruments. So you've got uh, fiddles and, um, uh, what was it, Leon, what's his name? Um, oh gosh, I'm gonna, I shouldn't have started, should I? Um, Leon McCall McAuliffe? McAuliffe. Yeah, Leon McAuliffe on uh, on uh, on lap steel or pedal steel and brilliant stuff. So yeah, 
Um, Western Swing of the highest order, the, the king of Western Swing. So there's that one. There's uh, the best of Bob Wills. Um, tracks like San Antonio Rose, uh, Deep in the Heart of Texas, Across the Alley from the Alamo. Uh, yeah, that's uh, there he is on a horse. Um, he was a, a, a fiddle player. He apparently wasn't a particularly good one. He was more of a of a band leader uh, in that sort of swing band uh, style. So he put together the band and he worked them. Uh, and got them probably to be the best Western Swing band ever, the uh, the Texas Playboys. So this is uh, Bob Wills, King of the we of Western Swing, uh, with special guest star Mel Tillis, who's singing uh, a number of songs. Once again, we get San Antonio Rose, um, uh, Faded Love, Big Beaver. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's that one. Then we've got Bob Wills plays the greatest string band hits. Uh, so I'm assuming this is post um, uh, Texas Playboys. We've got uh, Milk Cow Blues, Slow Poke, um, San Antonio Rose again, of course. Got to have that. Um, it's a, one of the things that is, is very annoying about these releases is they tell you absolutely nothing about when they were... Apart from that first one I showed you, they tell you absolutely nothing about when they were recorded. Um, all of them... So even though there are songs that are replicated across uh, across these albums, they are all different versions from different periods of the band, uh, or even when with different players. So um, this one here, we've got uh, the voice and the band of Bob Wills. Um, this has got Sitting on Top of the World, which is great. Um, don't let the deal go down. Uh, will you miss me when I'm gone? Um, yeah, good stuff, Bob Wills. This one's a good cover. I like this one. Look at that. I'll tell you. I'll take it out of the. Look at these. Look at these hipsters. My word. I think that's Fred from the Scooby Doo Gang, actually. He's got to be careful dancing backwards. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna end up with that cactus right up his jacksy. Um, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So this is uh, Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys, um, Orange Blossom Special. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Please tell me it's got San Antonio Rose. No, it doesn't have San Antonio Rose. Uh, Texas Two Step. Um, so yeah, lovely, nice one that one. It's, it is a repress. It's not an original. Um, from MCA Records, that one. I think it's from the early 70s. Um, this one's a bit of a, an interesting one. Uh, this is called uh, Fathers and Sons, Bob Wills and His Texas Playboys, and Asleep at the Wheel. So I originally saw this. This is a, a double. Um, and I thought... Um, I thought when I found this, when it came out of the package... I should say, I paid £5 for all of these... Um, I think there's nine of them. We've got two more to go. Uh, so that's nine records uh, for a fiver and some postage. Uh, and so I'm, I'm blown away. I'm, it's one of those things where I didn't think I was going to win it. I thought I was going to be uh, outbid. But no one else was bidding on these. No one in the British Isles wants to buy a collection of Bob Wills. You poor, poor people. What are you doing out there? Well, I mean, you've, you've let me get them, which is good. But oh, come on. Where's your musical taste lying? Anyway, so back to the record, sorry. Um, I originally thought this was going to be um, uh, a collaboration. Uh, but of course, actually, and we're going to come to that, Bob Wills died uh, in 1973. Um, and I think that actually was the first release of Asleep at the Wheels. Their first album was 1973. Um, they were kind of a modern uh, take on the Western Swing. And actually what we have here is the first disc is um, Bob Wills. So we've got um, San Antonio Rose, uh, Trouble in Mind, Take Me Back to Tulsa with Tommy Duncan on vo vo uh, vo uh, vocals. Vocals. Vehicles. Um, Big Beaver, Roly Poly. Um, yeah, the same old, same old. It's great. Um, and then the, the, the second disc, the second disc on here, um, is Asleep at the Wheel. And I think it's Asleep at the Wheel's third album. 
it doesn't actually call it that. So a very strange collection, putting those two together and not actually um, giving it its proper title. Well, money spinning operation. I mean, if actually, if we think about this, if this was released in 1974, so it was released just after Bob Wills died, so it's probably kind of put together to tie in on uh, on that. Hang on, if 74, it can't be. It must be their second album. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Two more Bob Wills. Okay, this is Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys in concert. It's a nice cover, I like that. Um, this is a double. Um, and that's a nice thing, isn't it? The fiddle case on the, on, the, on the table there. And there he is, sat, stood there. Um, and this is great. I mean, really, I've got a collection of the Tiffany's transcriptions as well, which were done for, for radio uh, broadcasts. And they're a lot rougher um, put together than some of the, some of the other um, recordings I've heard of, of Bob Wills. And that kind of roughness gives it a real edge. And again, the live um, sort of environment brings that to it. You can tell that this is music to dance to. Um, I'd have loved to have been at this, at this gig. Um, again, I have no idea when this was recorded. Uh, I've done a little bit of research and it says it's sometime in the sort of 60s. Um, but I, I, I do wish... I do wish everyone could be as anal as the jazz uh, uh, people who insist on knowing who the tea lady was on every single track. Um, yeah, the thing that's really weird about this is I thought, I, I put this on and then as soon as I put it on it finished. Um, it, each side lasts less than 10 minutes I think. Um, although the, the grooves look like they go quite quite the way into the record so it's a bit weird that um so it could probably have been done on one record mm. but very nice if you see it pick it up it's it's them at their best i think and then probably the best thing i got um bear in mind it was five quid for all of these is um a kind of a box set of bob wills and his texas playboys for the last time and this was recorded december the 3rd and 4th 1973 um and he died a couple of days uh, after those recordings, I think. Whoa, 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 hold your horses, Headley. Uh, Bob Wills didn't die in 1973. No, those sessions that were his last ones were held on the, uh, the 3rd and the 4th of December 1973. After the first day of the sessions, he went home and in his sleep had a massive stroke uh, from which he didn't wake up from. Uh, and he died in 1975 uh, on the 13th of May. Uh, I had to check the All Music Guide to Country Music, the Bible. Um, so, I just thought I'd get in there before some of you astute VCers out there got on to me about the wrong dates. So, um, it wasn't 1973, he died in, on the 13th of May, 1975. So, that's cleared up. Back to Headley. Um, and I was surprised to find, actually, this, is, this has got Merle Haggard doing some vocals on some of this. Apparently he begged <laughs> Bob Wills to let him be on this recording. And uh, So what we've got here is a two-record set... Um, really nice um, in, inside uh, things here with the band there. Um, there's another one in here as well. There we are, look at them, great. So those are really nice. And inside you also then get a, uh, a booklet um, all about the man and the recordings. Um, very nice, very nice package. Uh, the records are in really good condition. The box is a little bit, uh, a bit split at the bottom and things, but actually part of the part of the the original design was to make it look quite old. So yeah, so these are the last recordings um, of Bob Wills. Now Bob Wills, by this stage, I don't think he's actually playing e even on the fiddle. Um, he's just there at the recordings doing his. Oh, noises and ha oh, oh, ha, oh, all that business. In fact, it can be very off-putting for some people that they go, oh, "I like the, I like, I like Bob Wills," but then there's some crazy guy going ha oh, over it, <laughs> and that's Bob Wills. Anyway, that's a lovely set of Bob Wills stuff to go 
uh, to my collection. So, as I know that was, that was probably boring for a lot of you out there, um, I'll show you a couple of different things just to finish up with uh, that I've picked up recently as well um, to, to change the pace. Um, got Dave Brubeck here, plays West Side Story, and Andre Previn plays My Fair Lady. I hate these. Um, I love the CBS I Love Jazz records. I've got a Miles Davis as well. It's just the ugliest covers. Why they would do that? Anyway, let's forget about the record, uh, the, the sleeve, and think about what actually on it. Uh, and what you've got is got the Dave Brubeck Quartet uh, playing um, Maria. I feel pretty somewhere and tonight uh, from West Side Story. I love West Side Story. It's the greatest musical ever written. Um, yeah, and I don't care what you say. South Pacific. <laughs> Nonsense. Um, Evita? <laughs> anyway. Um, and on the other side, I was a bit... I, was, I wasn't I was sure what I was going to get with the Andre Previn uh, stuff. Um, my initial um, introduction, like most people in, in Britain of a certain age, will know Andre Previn for being on the Morecambe and Wise show, um, where uh, Eric Morecambe was playing... All the right, all the <laughs> all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. Um, and I then I've got the soundtrack to Rollerball, which he uh, put together and composed some sort of funky tunes for. So it's no surprising, I suppose. And actually, um, it, it was I was dreading listening to it actually because it's I could have danced all night on the street where you live with a little bit of luck. Wouldn't it be lovely and get me to the church on time? And, um, yeah, it's good, though. It's um, Andre Previn on piano, uh, guitar, bass and drums. So a nice little um, quartet. Uh, yeah, really nice, both of those, actually. And in fact, I'm going to put that on this afternoon. Bit of a strange one, this. This is uh, Mark T and the Brickbats from Middle East to Midwest. Now, I saw this, I picked this up at... Um, uh, vinyl tap in Huddersfield for a pound, and the t uh, based on the title alone, from Middle East to Midwest. Um, so I'm thinking, oh gosh, that is an interesting mix. And actually, what we've got isn't quite as uh, as interesting as that. It's a kind of uh, folky um, recording. Um, we've got. Um, uh, a, a, a lead belly song um, we've got a Greek traditional song we've got songs from Turkmenistan um, and yeah I need to give it a bit more of a listen but it's so that's Mark T and the Brickbats kind of uh, so that's from blah, 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 recorded in 1987 so either released in 87 or 88 I assume uh, yeah it's all right. Um, it's not as amazing as, as the Middle East to Midwest had led me to believe, but uh, still pretty good. Something I've been wanting to pick up for a while is a Dave Edmonds record. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of, of Elvis Costello, uh, and as a, as a result, I know a bit about Nick Lowe and Rockpile. But... Um, uh, I hadn't I hadn't picked up a Dave Edmonds, and this is good. It's um, it, he's doing that sort of um, uh, pub rock country. Uh, the Queen of Hearts on this. It's a bit weird. It's not got a track listing on the back. This one. I'm not sure if it's a. I don't think it's a compilation. But yeah, it's got Girls Talk, which is an Elvis Costello song, of course. Um, and I think it's got backing vocals from. I think I heard him on it. Uh, Queen of Hearts is a really good song as well. So yeah, um, um, it's nice. It's good. I'm, I'm going to look out for some more rock pile uh, stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, final record. And this was something I picked up um, on Discogs. It was, you know, when you buy a record and and you, you see what the, the price of the postage is and it says, oh, you can have uh, three records for that postage and you, you end up going, oh, I wonder what else this guy's got. And this was me trawling through what else the fella had and I came up with Sold American Flubber. Um, it's one of those weird records, this one, that has the opening at the top or is that supposed to be the side? I don't know. It's 
bit of a garish cover. Now, Sold American, this is from 1989 on Rough Trade, and Sold American are uh, sort of alternative country. They are a kind of an alternative stoner rock country. Um, if you, if people like early um, uh, Will Oldham um, and um, oh, what's the name guy from Smog, um, Callahan, B Bill Callahan, um, you would like this. This is kind of a proto version of what they would do. Um, probably about what ten years before they would do it. Um, really, really pleased to find that. It was, I think, a pa pay, paid a fiver for it. Um, very nice copy. So there we go. So um, thank you uh, to John, uh, Six Inch Pianist, Pianist, um, for the uh, for the VCLT. The Jayhawks album is cracking. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Bob Wills. If you haven't listened to Bob Wills, go out and find some Bob Wills. Uh, in fact, I saw that um, the uh, the last. Uh, uh, I saw that one on Discogs in the UK for a fiver. So, go and get it. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, and the rest. So, um, I've been another fat bearded man talking about records. Until I see you again, bye-bye for now.